Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Rob Rodriguez. Now, we've covered fiction before, but if you think about it, what if superheroes were non-fiction? Now, I know what you're thinking. Superman can't be real. Spider-Man can't be real. However, Batman can be real if you're rich enough. The Flash? Usain Bolt ring a bell? Yeah, if superheroes were non-fiction, how long would it take the skeptics to stop being completely stubborn about it? I mean, you know skeptics are all like, I need to see it for my own eyes. And then, what if, right next to them, um, a superhero is too far away from a microwave so they gotta use their heat vision, and then you're like, hey, cool party trick, what YouTube tutorial taught you that? I gotta learn that. Oh, the things they teach us on YouTube. Wait, I'm a skeptic, so it's fake. You know how bending steel bars, that's a really cliche superhero trick. Okay, so a skeptic would think, okay, he's just very strong. There's no way he has superhuman strength. But it was right in front of you. How are you still skeptic about it? Well, anyway, since we have more to talk about with this topic, superheroes have this human alias that they go by uh, when they're not fighting crime. But sometimes these human aliases, also known as secret identities, can be pretty obvious. You know? I mean, if you're a masked hero, you're, you're good. If you're a masked crusader. But let's say you're, you're exposing your whole face. You gotta wear at least some, some form of eye gear, if you think about it. But the thing is, when you have eye gear, you gotta adopt another personality. Because then, this could have happened in the first movie. Oh, uh, Lois? Uh, gee, golly gosh, um, there's no way to tell you this, but, uh, I'm Superman. Okay, that was not a joke I made up. They actually do that in the movies. In fact, that was a little bit I called by Rachel Clark Kent. As you may know, every superhero has a damsel in distress. Correct me if I'm wrong, comment section and forums. But, you know, if you have your Lois Lane, of course, they're going to be shocked the first time you save their life. Because if you remember from the movie, you've got me, but who's got you? I quote Lois Lane. Now, if let's say you're the average person who just fell off a building, and then a superhero swoops up to save you, you're just going to naturally want to get out of his arms, even though he's saving your life, because you're shocked. As much as I would like to uh, change anything of human history by rotating the Earth the other way around, I'm going to have to tell you I can't do that and I need a minute. So as you may know, every TV show, every video game comes with a little thing called impressionable behavior. Now, it's not your own behavior, it's just you start using phrases and selective tones that you've heard from the show, video game, any source of entertainment. By the way, you see this? This is a, a minion. What makes them impressionable is that now we got really annoying jerks doing the impression of these things. I mean, it's not their fault that they're so funny, but some people just overdo it. By the way, what in the world is a ram's bottom? Well, anyway, next on the show, it's time for events in history that actually happened. The part of the show where I will find a clip, or someone will find a clip for me, and we will talk about it. This is events in history that actually happened. So I'm sure there's a lot of avid fans of Full House. It lasted eight seasons. Next year we're getting Fuller House. But you gotta know, there's this season four episode titled The IQ Man. Take a look at this clip. Um, America's favorite uncle broke character at one point. Why don't you pay close attention? Is it? Stop! If you must love me... Love me for my IQ. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for General Hospital and Full House, this guy could have made it on SNL. I mean, he's already got the breaking character thing. 
Well, anyway, that is the show for you this week. Until next time, see ya.